Hello and welcome to Why Golf? Opinion Matters. This is the podcast where we celebrate everything about the sport with the great and the good of the golfing world. From the seasoned pros to those who have only just discovered their passion for the game. For those of you who haven't heard about Why Golf before, it's the place to go to find out why golf has such wide-ranging benefits for all of us. Whether you're an individual, company or federation, this platform is for everyone. If you want to check out everything we have to offer, just head to thisiswhygolf.com, which has been created to explain and explore why golf is so beneficial and quite simply one of the greatest sports on the planet. This episode, we're chatting to one of the world's biggest movie stars, which is exciting. You'll recognise Jamie Dornan from the roles in global blockbusters such as the Fifty Shades trilogy and more recently Belfast, which was absolutely brilliant, as well as TV appearances in uh, The Incredible, The Fall and Once Upon a Time. He's also dabbled in music, last year launched his own menswear brand called 1111 and is a model too. In 2006, GQ even labelled Jamie as the male Kate Moss. He's also been playing golf for years and once eagled the 18th on the old course at St Andrews. That was back in 2015 at the Dunhill Links Championship. I'm sure we'll get a lot of tips from Jamie. Jamie, great to see you. Thank you for being on our podcast. Thank you for having me. I don't think I have any good tips that can help with <laughs> golf game. Um, well, that's right. Have you got no, like nothing? No tips? <laughs> I mean, like practical, like tips. I mean, I, th- I, I'm, I think I'm at a stage long after a long time playing golf of just like, you just got to try to enjoy it. And if it, it, enjoying it, you know, if you're competitive, I'm a very competitive person. I think I put too much a lot of like needing to score well or feel like I'm needing to play well. And actually acceptance is a big thing in golf, isn't it? Right? I wish I was at a point and I would tell other people to just be at a point where there's an acceptance that you're not Rory and you're not going to go out and stiff it to, you know, 12 feet, you know, with every approach shot and you're not going to bang it 320 yards in the middle every time. That acceptance is is hard to embrace, um, but I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to do that. I think it's frustrating if you have good golf in you, which a lot of us have, and that, oh, that consistency thing we're all choosing. But... You know, sometimes I can hit, I really can hit great big talker drives and, and leave myself a putt and they tape to St. Andrews to pull an eagle and, and that one time it comes off. And when you know you have those like moments in you, you're always chasing those. And sometimes I wish that actually I was more the guy who, um, often older people who play golf, um, the older men or women that you see at clubs where they, they have a funny little swing, but they hit it straight. And they don't hit it very far, but it, <laughs> but it goes straight. And I actually wish that I sort of <laughs> didn't have those big drives in me or those like sort of when they come off some some jazzy looking golf shots in me because they're so rare that <laughs> they come off. <laughs> and actually, I was just able to go up and just think it, you know, 200 yards up the fairway off the tee. And then I just, I kind of would love that. And it's not, it, there's no show, there's no flair in that kind of golf, but um you'd score better. 100%. It's like patting it down the fairway, isn't it? And when you play against an opponent who does that, it's so irritating. It gets in your head because you're thinking, I just want to, you know, smash this one, and as you say, 300 yards, and it feels amazing. But then those players who do pat it down the fairway, their golf is pretty consistent. Always, always. And it's, you yeah. know, it's something you're you're chasing. And, 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 and sometimes I feel that yeah, I just need to accept that I'm, um, for whatever reason, not going to get consistent. It's a time thing as well, isn't it? I mean, Jesus, it's so hard to, you know, play good golf if you're not playing a lot of golf. Um, although you were saying the other day that you went out <laughs> and not playing a lot of golf and played well. So, and that happened. I think that's freaky and that it's lucky. And I think usually if you haven't been playing a lot and your coordination is slightly off and your rhythm's off because you haven't played, then chances are you're not, you're not going to play play good golf. No, uh, no, it's very, it's very fluky if you do. But I just, I, before we really get into things, the shirt. Thank you. You've made such an yeah. effort. It's gorgeous. Where's that from? It's got little golfers on it. I don't even know where it's from, but I tell you what, I, I, I bought it specifically for my 
my wife and I had a joint 40th last year, and we did a big party at our house um, where we, we used to live in the Cotswolds, and we did uh, we did a big party in our house before we sold the house. I'm like, I'm gonna, I don't know why, be wearing a golf shirt on my 40th. But, um, I felt that that was the right thing, so I bought it specifically for that, and then I, I'm in Dublin filming at the moment, and I um, I realized I packed it, and I sort of no idea <laughs> I packed it because I never, you know, it was a year ago that I wore it. So it's my birthday the next week. Um, but then I thought, well, this is great. I can wear it because we're talking golf. So it's it's all worked out well. I, it's as if it's meant to be. I'm delighted yeah. that the golf shirt has made an appearance on my golf. Um, let's go back to the 18th and when you did make that eagle back in 2015, playing with mm. Peter Uline. And I watched yeah. the footage this morning and you looked so, well, you, you were in shock, but also delight and ecstasy. What was that feeling like on 18 back then? It, it, well, listen, I, you know, I played a decent level of, of a few sports, um, a very sporty childhood, uh, and, uh, you know, achieved not amazing things, but like did all right in them. Well, I think it felt, it felt like my sort of greatest sporting achievement. I, I, think. I think it was the fact that it was, it was towards, you know, it was um, on the most famous, arguably the most famous hole in world golf. Um, I had my mate Mike on the bag that, that week. I, I sort of clapped down on that a wee bit, the Dunhill, but they used to, I mean, I haven't let you play Dunhill since 2017 because of schedule. I'd seem to always be filming around that time now. It's, so torture, um, but I uh, I have my my one of my best friends in the world, Mike Rogers, on the bag, and uh, I sort of asked if I could do that. And I don't think they allow that anymore, which is which is fair <laughs> enough. Um, but it was extra special because he was there, and you know it, the the grand stands up and it, it was full, and Sky Sports are there, the film you, and it was one of those ones where it's a very inviting tee shot. You know, unless you're a bit slicer, like I, I do tend to be off the tee, particularly. But <laughs> there's something about that, and I have. I hit the Russick the next year, I think, um, and I didn't get the sort of lucky bounce that the, the old person gets back on the, into play. But I don't know. I just hit, I hit a really, really good drive and went over 300 yards, low, you know, runs there, you know. Mm. ran up and I thought god that might be up near the green that was sort of right at it you know where the flag was really hit that well anyway and I played okay that day I was in a decent groove I guess and then I got up I, I, I Peter Ulan was my bro but Steve Redgrave was staying uh, in that group as well and he had an old caddy he, he has all the Dunhills load local so now just caddy it's either Dave or John. It was one of those like solid, <laughs> solid. Day. And he, it was quite clearly a big swinging right to left pot. I was up in that sort of valley of sin. Yeah. And he said there was a lot of movement right to left there. And I was like, okay. I mean, and, I know. <laughs> it, 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 he wasn't very specific. He wasn't like, oh, it's like, you know, you're at that, that far post. <laughs> he's just like, it's a big swinger right to left. I went, yeah, no, no, no. That's, I got that. Yeah. Um, and I did just try to, risk. it's one of those ones, it's just get down two and get a birdie on the 18th. Oh. And um, and I hit it, and I, it was it was steamy. Like, if you watched it this morning, it'll be, you, you, you'll rip, like, if it hadn't hit the hole, it was probably 10 feet by, yeah. and I'd probably wouldn't have fancied myself a little bit. But it was just one of those ones that just hit it, dropped, and I, I, I truly, I was shocked, I was like, um, it was a real sort of moment of like, what a time to do it, you know, with my mate and lots of people watching and Sky Sports cameras watching. Oh, so Heaven, it, just brilliant. Yeah, no. it's uh, it's those moments though, isn't it, in golf that we cherish and we love and we look back on, you know, making memories on the golf course, isn't it, which is, is what the game's all about. Yeah, like I'm always trying to explain to people, I've said this before to people that I, sort of, I feel like I spend my life sort of defending golf to people. Um, <laughs> It, it, you know, it, it, like I grew up in a sort of golf environment and I sort of, you know, um, I I don't consider golf to be like an elite sport, but I understand in many realms and in many places it is. And I, I do understand that there's a, there's a side of golf that I don't like. And there's a sort of laser wearing old guard. This has to be tucked in that, that I think is 
negative about golf and that we need to sort of move away from or try to make golf more accessible, cooler, younger, and fresher. I'm all for that. Um, um, but I, I, so I spend a lot of time, you know, wherever I am in the world, you sit beside someone at dinner or something, whatever you say, they go, and they're like, golf, really? And you're like, oh, right. So all that negativity, that the all the things I'm talking about there, and the, the negative connotations around the sport, they're valid. They are valid. And you're always trying to, I always try to bring it down to a simplest form of like, there's lots of clubs where it's not like that, right? There's lots of accessible clubs where else we don't pay those fees to join or whatever. It is the accessible sport. Even if it's just going to driving range and whacking balls. The thing about actual golf and playing the game of golf, for me, it's it, not just the social side of it, like getting drunk with the people you're playing with, whatever. It's not, it's not even just an alcohol thing. It's that thing of like, which is good, a good fun part of it. If you are that wind tied and you're on a golf trip, it's great. But it's that thing of like you're with friends, you're walking around, often somewhere very pretty, often by, you know, if you're lucky enough, you're, you're, you know, you're surrounded by greenery. That's usually a given. <laughs> but you're know, <laughs> by a coastline where there's beautiful woods. Where they, like it's all somewhere aesthetically very pleasing. Um, people love, people talk. I think you get the best, the most out of conversations when you're walking. You know, I think more interviews should be done on the move because yeah. you up and you're freer and you, 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 I don't know, it's like it clears your mind or something. So if you're going for a big walk with, you know, people you care about, having these great chats, like in the simplest form, yes, in the middle of it, you're playing a game. If you're a competitive person, like a lot of people are, a lot of people like to not admit that they're really competitive. And you play this really mind bending, bending. game. This is in a game in the middle of it that is, that is a game of real skill and mental um, agility. And what's not to, you know, what's, what, what's not to like about it? You know, I, I, you know, it, it's not too strenuous, uh, you know, unless you're get yourself pretty bang on the shape. Like it, it, you're just walking and uh, it like, it takes a lot of time. I'm trying to, you know, I, I and it, it, for me, it's just like a no brainer of like a great thing to do that is um, good for your mind and good for your soul. And, so, uh, totally. To, I think you've summed it up really, really well. We've spoken to quite a few guests who have said exactly the same thing. It's about bringing people together, isn't it? That community yeah. that you feel and physical exercise, you know, the, the me mental exercise as well and how good it is for our health, mentally and physically. Um, I just want to mention, um, because I saw some really funny, <laughs> funny clips last night, uh, I have been watching you on YouTube a little bit, right. uh, which is sounds a bit odd. But there was one really funny clip about you talking about you walking. And in golf, we walk a lot, don't we? We walk down the fairways. And I remember speaking to Colin Montgomery quite a few times. His psychologist has said, you know, you've got to walk tall down that fairway. You own it and breathe in the fresh air. Enjoy yourself. But didn't one director tell you, Jamie, that you didn't, that he, he sort of wondered about your walk? What was that about? Yeah, said that... Uh... I did. I, I sort of walked. It was in the fall, actually. Uh, the first series of the ball, which is um, God, 11, 11 years ago now. Um, oh, wow. And uh, I, yeah, I died. Well, I, was, I, died, I was walking. Uh, <laughs> so I thought I wasn't giving it much thought, to be honest with you. And then he, he sort of said, Is that like a character thing you're doing? There's still the walk there. And I was like, No, it's not. It's just me walking, really. Um, and uh, he sort of suggested that maybe I take sort of longer strides was what he what he suggested. <laughs> but about to see walk, and I've I've was in my head about it for a long time, you know. And I, was and it? it? Yeah, I sort of I'm in and out of my head about it. The way all the securities and I have many, um, <laughs> but the weirdly at the moment, this might trigger it. But guy, you bring oh, no. it up. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but, uh, at the moment, I'm a bit like, well, look, it's got me this far. It's yes. okay. It it's works. It's a good walk. Um, I don't really have back pain. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a good runner. I'm fit. I, my walk's obviously, it's all right. Like It's, it's great. We're doing yeah. okay. You know, I'm getting from A to B. 
So oh, long. totally. It's very subjective yeah. the way people see you walk. But uh, no, it was just it was hilarious how you, you know how you explain that that he's that you were walking a bit too much on your tiptoes and you tried to and walk can, more on your heels. Yeah, and I think I think it is a, a I think it's a hereditary thing. You know, our our kids with three girls, and, um, uh, particularly number one and number three, um, are real tiptoes. You know, um, yeah. particularly, particularly our youngest, she's just everywhere in her tiptoes. Really? Um, and she's four now and she's still, you know, I don't think her heels have ever touched the ground, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Heel first. What about your golf swing when you're over the ball? Where, where's your where's your weight? What do you I think about it at all? Depends what happened on that shot before. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I um, <laughs> if I'm chipping these days, I think my light, Heel is up off the ground because I'm trying to give myself a better sort of the pack hanging there. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, you know, it's very sort of YouTube golf I'm playing also. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I want to talk about your simulator in just a moment, but I'm oh. thinking about you growing up in Northern Ireland, which you mentioned, and we had Podrick Harrington on for for an episode, yeah. and he, he was talking about you know the, just the glorious landscape there. You were surrounded by golf growing up. It was was it inevitable that you were going to play? I think. It, Maybe with the sort of where I grew, I grew up right to Royal Belfast Golf Club, which I'd, I've been a member of for thirty years. Um, I, I'm from Hollywood, same place as Rory, and um, Hollywood Golf Club, two golf clubs in Hollywood, there's Royal Belfast, there's Hollywood, um, which around it, all of Ireland's like that. You know, it is one giant golf course almost. You know, um, and it's it's accessible in Ireland. You know, you, anyone can go play golf. You know, there, there's clubs where. Um, it costs more, and there's clubs that are maybe harder to get into, or we're sort of a bit fustier. Uh, but lots to the contrary of that. So um, it felt like just geography wise, and this was school that I went to, and other guys around me doing it, the, and the sort of influence of, you know, um, well, you know, Irish golfers, you know, Emma Darcy to O'Connor Junior to Darren Clark to. Paul McGinley, the Harry did all these like great um, Irish golfers um, from you know small place. We seem to have produced a lot of a lot of great talent, Amazing. and now mm. the, maybe arguably the most the most talented of this generation we were raised. So, um, mm. it, it, yeah, it 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 felt like uh, a sport that was like there, that was so tangible that you could you could grasp at. Um, I sort of wish I'd started it earlier. Um, it wasn't my sort of summer activity really when I was, I, you know, I started playing a little bit, but I was sort of 11 or 12, but I didn't really take it up right. properly until I was 17 maybe. And then I didn't play at all in my 20s. I moved to London at 20 and then just, it, it, London's hard, you know, it's hard to play golf. Like I was literally like Hackney. Um, it, 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 there wasn't a lot of golf around yeah. there. Um, so I really, my 20s didn't really play much at all. And then in my 30s, took it up again properly and then it become sort of mildly obsessed with it. Um, um, and I love that it'll always, hopefully, you know, you know, body willing and uh, everything else willing, it'll always be around, you know. And there's no other sport, like there's really not, you know, there's other sports that are very low impact on the body, like darts or something, but in, in, in terms of <laughs> sports that like get you outside that are, you can be uber competitive with because of the whole system of the handicap system of it. You know, you can be competitive up until you're in your 90s. You know, I mean, the yeah. main main of the sport that you can do that, you know, and, uh, and I love that you can travel all kinds of parts of the world and, and there's golf there. And it's unlike the other jobs that you know are involved when you grow up and it feels different and smells different. And it's, yeah, I just, it, it, I just, I, I do love it. I watch so much of it. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm obsessively, you know, even tournaments that I'm not watching, I'm just, I'm on that DP World Tour app, um, constantly just seeing. Are the, you? Yeah, oh, co constantly, constantly. Yeah, yeah, I really am. Oh, that's amazing. And you mentioned Rory. Um, yeah. Do you follow him avidly? I mean, are you? Do you chat with him at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Craig Rory is a good friend. Um, uh, I love the guy. I think he's brilliant. I think he's one unbelievable ambassador for the game. What an unbelievable ambassador for, for 
the part of the world that we're both from. And, uh, and I mean, yeah, people got maybe a bit carried away, I think, you know, the hyperbole of like he saved golf uh, <laughs> last year. But like, it's, it was very impressive what he, the burden that he took upon himself last year with, you know, flying the flag for the PGA Tour and uh, uh, DP World Tour, I guess, against the whole live thing and, and uh, continues to do so. And, and to play the golf that he played last year, get himself back in the number one world. It was nothing short of miraculous, truly, you know. And um, I think, sadly, there's been a little bit of fatigue that came. It took a little while to come, but it's maybe come there. Maybe not at the, not at the best time, just before the major season got underway. <laughs> but um, I think we're about to see a big, big bounce back from him. Um, I really do believe he's going uh... to new. Yeah, I think he's going to win the Open. Uh, I really do. And then I think Augusta will become something else that's more sort of um, a t- change, change how Augusta looks to him, I guess, if he if he gets another uh, major. But um, no, I, 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 I love the guy. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's, you know, it, there's a reason why um, I think people in your game, in the punditry game, in, in other players, everyone, he's sort of, judged differently because we all anyone who knows a bit about golf knows that it's this sort of bit of a different grade for Rory and you yeah. know ev- there's a, oh, like, everyone's playing the best golf who wins everyone says Rory all the commentators say Rory all the past players say Rory you know um, no yeah there's, that's not trying to undermine Joel Ram or anything here but, you know or Scully Scheffler or anyone else who's up there but um, he when he's all form there's, there's really nothing like it and yeah. I think we all we all, not just people we know personally, but just everyone wants them to be on fourth all the time because it's good for the game. It's it's very exciting to watch. Um, but I, I have to say, like my similar to where the American audience is, what they lose, um, particularly in his prime, but even more recently, if Tiger doesn't make the cut, they lose like seventy percent of their audience or something like that. It's an insane figure. Yeah. Someone told me. I'm a bit like that with with Rory. I have to say, um, I it's not like I can't get excited watching other players, but you know, let's take the Masters. It, 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 the shine was off the Masters for me a little bit after Rory didn't make the weekend, um, and uh, I, you know, I still I I, I wanted John Ram to win, the like he won, and he deserves to win and deserves to win loads more majors, but. Um, I have to, I have to sort of pick myself back up and go, right, come on, you can enjoy it just because it's not Rory going to be on the weekend or contending. Um, that you can still enjoy it because you love the game. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a, he's, he's a big part of it for me. Oh, that's so funny. Come on, come on, Jamie, you can enjoy this. Just <laughs> you can watch other golfers. <laughs> well, what was nice this year is we were, we were here, we were, I was already in Ireland for the Masters and uh, start filming. And uh, my wife, my kids were here. And my sister and her family were here from from the north. They'd driven down, and uh, we sort of rented this lovely house in Wicklow. And um, they, they, my sister and her husband wouldn't watch any golf really. And I sort of, my wife likes watching. Millie likes watching the Masters because it's so pretty. And I always make her put a little cheeky bet on. And uh, I, t- I actually talked her out of putting the each way bet on Phil Mickelson this year because uh, I was oh. like, listen. She's always bet on Phil. I mean, we've been together more than 14 years. She's always bet on Phil. And I've always had the Masters because it's a pretty safe bet. You know, he always shows up there. But I was like, look, he's nowhere near any form. He's playing a live. <laughs> hardly gets to play any golf. He'd be missing cuts there. But there, Sorry, there aren't any cuts there. He's been not playing well there. <laughs> I said I wouldn't bother him. And of course, he goes and does that on, on Sunday. She would have made pretty pretty good money. Anyway, oh, um, Millie. Sorry, got, but I know it was a bit. It was my fault, really. Yeah, she shouldn't have, have listened to you. <laughs> oh, terrible, terrible. Um, but yeah, my sister and her husband got really into watching the Masters this year, and actually their enthusiasm sort of carried me out of my Rory missing cut funk, and so it got yeah. got me going. Yeah. Oh, that's great! And you've got you've got three girls, and do you ever yeah. take them to the driving range, or do they ever show any kind of interest? Because you've got your your simulator at home that you installed just before COVID. Not anymore because we've moved. Moved. You've moved, but so what? So are you missing your simulator? Yeah, the guy who I, I sold the house to that bought the simulator off me. It's a real sore oh, point. To be, uh, oh no! Uh, 
adults has suffered immeasurably since. <laughs> um, so I brought up the simulator. I brought up you walking. You're going to need therapy after this. I'm going to need to go for a long walk after this. Um, <laughs> I reckon I've right. I mean, you just or you just play when you have a simulator at home. Uh, you play better golf. You just do because you're hitting balls all the time. Yeah. I used to call it the world's most expensive punch bag, and that's what it felt like. You know, you, that, sometimes it was that it was like a release. I just go down and I'd you know, put it on range mode or whatever, and I just like whack golf balls to like get something out of my system. Um, and actually, well, sometimes I'd be trying to finesse stuff or, or play, just trying to have fun and have friends in there and have a drink and, and play, you know, San Andrews or whatever courses on the simulator. So it was all about um, just hitting that many golf balls. You, you, you're just your game is in better shape, and and yeah. now I, I'm, I'm already a year, uh, not quite, but nine months since we since we moved, and uh, I don't. It's have like any. a breakup, isn't it? It's like you've broken up with your <laughs> simulator. I feel like yeah. you really. We need to dig deep with this, and you know, get oh, to the root. The, but the guy, also the guy I sold it to, I was like, uh, he said, "Oh, I'll buy the simulator." I said, "Great." I said, "Do you play golf?" And he goes, "Not really." You know, it's oh, just that makes gonna... it worse. I that know. makes it worse. The fact that he just doesn't play golf. Oh, because I know how obsessed you were. Because, I, well, on your Instagram, um, you did the loop de loop five iron challenge, and oh, yeah. I, I know you're a real student of the game. And I love, I love the preciseness of you put two hundred and thirty four point two seven yards. I'm pretty sure it was that. I love that. Yeah. Well, a that's a good hit with a five iron that you've done some funky loop thing with. Um, and also, I just thought if it becomes, it was in COVID, I was so bored. And I thought if it becomes, if anyone else put, then put some there, that not point four or whatever could be defective, <laughs> it was my thinking. But actually, like, like there's a guy, like, you know, nobody took up the challenge, by the way. So, like, <laughs> nobody took, Rory, there's so many people watched it, though. Uh, yeah, maybe watched it, but like, you know, I tied, I tried to tie guys I know when we play. Um, on the tour, I've tied Rory and Shane Laurie and guys that, that I know would get on very well. If, and we, we all follow each other. Um, but no one really <laughs> took it up. But I, I, oh, we will not ignore you, Jamie. If you tag us, we'll definitely follow. Definitely. Um, so you're filming at the moment. What are you filming? Can you tell us? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did a series called The Tourist for BBC that we shot in um, Australia, the first series. And um, we uh, were only ever meant to make one of them, and it was mm. uh, this is a, 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 a not so humble brag. It was the most watched drama in the UK last year, so it was oh, uh, wow. uh, suddenly they were like, Well, let's um, make another. Do you want to make another? And I said, Well, I was like, Yeah, but I, I, I wasn't really willing to take my family the whole way. They were out for five months in Australia weren't ready to take on a trip like that again so there's a way of shooting it closer to home so here we are in, in Dublin so um, oh brilliant yeah. That's nice. I watched it it was absolutely amazing I look forward to watching what you're filming right now and do you have any time to play golf at the moment um, this is your afternoon off and you're talking about golf I know I, I'm going to try to get to the range tonight uh, because I am actually managing to go out and play tomorrow I'm playing uh, I sort of got a half day, and I'm trying. I'm trying to try to get down to Adair Manor, which is. Uh, I was going to say maybe the last time I saw you was it was at Adair. It was uh, at the JP McManus event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to get out there with Brian O'Driscoll, who you, I'm sure you know. Uh, I play a fair bit of golf with. Um, so I need to get to the range tonight to see if <laughs> we're if able there anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's tough when you're filming. It is. It's hard. It, I, I'm, yeah. I'm up towards lock, the great benefit of Ireland. Many great benefits of this place, uh, I, will, I will say. But a great benefit is we get longer evenings than you would even in the UK because more northerly and we, um, you know, it'll stay light till after ten here. So as oh, amazing. You know, I'm here for a long time. So um, as those nights in the evenings get longer, I'm hoping for. Often we finish at six o'clock and finish work. Yeah, I start horrifically early, but I, I, I finish by six. I could be teeing off six thirty because there's a my mate's a member of a place near where we're filming. And I could get eighteen holes in um of an evening. So I'm 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 looking forward to those evenings. 
uh, which are not too far away. You know. Oh, that's so great. And you, do you take your clubs with you? I take them everywhere. Yeah, they're literally sat there. You can't see they're, they're just oh, behind are they? me. It looks like a nice apartment anyway. Nice. It's, it's a nice, it's, a, it's nice. It's, it's okay. The sun shining. I can see that, you know, sunshine. the light. It's all right in here, yeah. Yeah, I love the fact, I just love the fact you've worn your golf shirt as well. I mean, I, I've worn green because of, you I know, appreciate... Ireland. Come on. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Yeah, great. I love I love everyone from Ireland and the north and the north as well. Um, yeah. So tell it tell us a little bit about your game in particular and the, what's the strength to your game? Would you say, Jamie, when you're you're out on the course? Last in Ireland. Um... <laughs> oh, also, I've been asked to ask you about the the first tee at Sunningdale. Can you elaborate a little bit about the first tee at Sunningdale? A close friend you been... of, you, of yours you... has said. Have you been talking to Tim Hellman? Uh, he was one of them. There was someone else as well. Terry Crowley? Possibly. Steve Martin? Definitely. Why would Steve bring up, like, why would Steve throw me up? <laughs> up uh, Edmund and Crowley, like, I don't know them well off, so I don't care about them. Throw me up with the bus, but Steve didn't. Um, oh. Yeah, I tell you what, that was the first time I ever played something, do, And it being one of those things where I sort of nearly played it a few times, whatever. And this was just uh, last year, and um, I got invited to play. Or Steve, uh, I did something nice for Tim Henman. I did a thing. I made a video for a uh, thing for his wife, and uh, he said, "Like, thank you for doing that." And I know Tim. I've met him a few times just through the Dunhill. Hill. Yeah, he's and a great golfer as well. He's a very classy golfer. Yeah, mm, yeah. very steady. Uh, yeah. So I was like, uh, he said, "Look, if you do the same for me, I'll." Uh, I'll take you up selling death a great and I um I was playing with Steve, who's one of the best mates, and then Tim and this guy, Terry Crawley, had not met. Steve. Anyway, I <laughs> it, it, Tim <laughs> What did Tim, you do what, on the first it, at Sunningdale? Well, well the first was at least of my problems. Um Tim that is very competitive and he's very cheeky. I just say and uh, he won't believe it was the only time I played played with him. We played near each other at Dunhill, but it's the only time I played with him. And I fully, and the only time in my life have I had the, I had the shanks, um, but like oh. full on shanks. I'm not talking. I, 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 I maybe I've been on where I have like a shank out of nowhere, but like I had the shank. I almost didn't even know it was a thing. I mean, even um, the word. Ooh. You know, I know when you get people saying, don't say it. But I was going to say, I'll say it all day. I've never, <laughs> never, I've never got actually, it. <laughs> I've actually, I literally, I, I couldn't do anything. If I if I took the club away out here, if I took them here, if I did, I, I, nothing, could, I couldn't play golf. I mean, <laughs> I, first time I was on a deal. And uh, it was just, it was like hell. It was genuine. Yeah, well, Jamie, I'm sure a lot of people listening can relate to it, though. Ah. When you go out and you have so many expectations and you have to put them all to one side. But when you phys- when you literally can't hit the golf ball, it's, I, yeah. I, I could I obviously barely make them out of the golf ball. It was incredible. And now and again, somewhere happened, I'd, I'd, I'd hit a good shot and Tim would go okay. like, hey, here's my partner, and he'd be like, why don't you just do that every time? Where's that been? And I was like, I, I can't, I'm not... <laughs> And I don't know what's happening here. I'm having some kind of physical breakdown. I'm <laughs> it was awful. But on the first, I hit a uh, sort of high hook thing that um, Tim was saying they're going to put a plaque uh, where <laughs> where my butt landed up because he's never seen anyone over there before. It was uh, an atrocious shot, but it wasn't one of the worst of the day. That's right. It. Well, if you go right on the first, you well, you're going to hit the road you know, if you go yeah, too you're far right. right. So yeah, yeah I, I was in play. I, you know, I, it, at least uh, there's if we're gonna take positives from it. Okay. But, uh, that was a bad day. What are my strengths? I look if. if yeah, I'm come on, tell us your strengths, but, and also you know you you'll have a, a round like that. But what brings you back to the game? It's those few shots that you connect with, isn't it? Yeah, but I I uh, I honestly couldn't put the club head anywhere near the ball for four and a half hours and that was on a Tuesday I think on the either the Thursday or the Friday I went and played what was my old home course when we were living in the Cotswolds at Minchin Hampton Golf Club it's called and I shot like 78 or something oh, like, wow. two, like two days later and I text 
And that was, that was like, <laughs> so big. and he was like, well, I don't have to leave it. Did he believe you? No, no. He was like, no. <laughs> I, it's not a helpful thing even to lie about it in a way. No. You're really lying to yourself. I, I really did go out and shoot. It's like, it's like, like all of us can relate to this. Like some days it's just totally. feels but some days you have a swing and it's just there and your rhythm's there and you're not fighting it. You're not snatching at it. You're not, you know, often those days are your sunny days. I'm going to be honest. Like it's, it's, it's fair weather stuff. It's like you're, you're, you're in Portugal, you know, you go to the beach after to meet your your wife and your mate's wife or whatever. Or, and you know, you're going to have a few beers. Like sometimes there's good stuff surrounding it that just put you at ease. Yeah. Um, it's often Portugal, often like you're golfing Portugal. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I, uh, it, you know, when I play well, with, with the, the, okay, the times I've, pl- I've shot in the 70s, which I probably only, I could count on just about uh, two hands, probably the, the rides I've shot in the 70s. Again, which is why I shouldn't be of eight or eight and a half, you know, nine. Um, yeah. It doesn't happen enough. Um, yeah. But in those rounds, just relaxed. Is you relaxed? You know, yes. and you're not, the last mm. thing you're thinking about is a swim. You are just, you're just thinking of like turning and you trusting that your hands are being going to be a good position there. And then all you have to do there is uncoil. I mean, that, that essentially you play your best job and the pros are like that too. They're not, they're not thinking of like, oh, I better get that, keep my right hand outside my left on the way back and, and better not have a gap here. They're not, none of those technical things go over their head. And, uh, I think even on an amateur level or it's sort a of hacker's level, whatever way you would call it. It's the same thing. And any time you're fighting your game and you're going, well, God, I remember that day I played well and I was, oh my, I was thinking this. And, well, I, I'm, I'm doing the thing where I short, I short at the end. My swing shorter. I was doing a half swing. At work. And then you're just like trying to find it in the golf course and then you're... Yeah, that, you are so but, done, aren't you? Yeah, but I think that's like, it's sort of philosophy for life, isn't it? The more we let go and we allow and the more you're kind of in flow, as you say, the pros always talk about being in flow and not thinking about mm. anything when they're winning golf tournaments. But it's yeah. when it, it becomes really technical and overthinky that you, you, you lose your game. But it's a bit, I suppose, I'm trying to relate it to like acting and, you know, scenes that you're in, which are pretty pressurised because you've got... <laughs> you know, camera crews around you, it's costing a lot of money to film yep. something and yep. the pressure's on you to perform to a certain level. Yeah. Are you, when are you able to let go and, you know, your talent shine through? Well, the thing is, I I, I, I think there's loads of parallels that particularly got more in general, but it's that thing of like my job and with, with a professional golfer's job, if you've done all the work previous, if you're super prepared, then you should be able to just go out and have fun, you know. And that's essentially what it is. Like I, I never turn up to set going, oh god, how is it? I conjure up like, uh, like emotion there. You yeah. Know, <laughs> what is it I do to so, like maybe cry or like what was I draw on from life experience and and uh, and the idea of God, do I know my life? I mean, don't think I know my life. You've done all that. That's all done. Yeah. That's work. You've done all that work, so that hopefully when I step on set, I feel totally free and unencumbered with thought um so that um when someone's saying something to me i can truthfully answer it like i'm hearing it for the first time and like that's where you want to get to i think you know you know men and women when they're in their their, their peak you know they're they're not thinking about anything other than going out playing good golf you know because yeah. they know, they know that they've done the work it's the same it's the same thing um and uh, but it's mad. It's the madness of it, like you know, I find just like someone could say something. You're standing over a pot, and someone and you haven't been like, well all day, and then you, you've been missing everything inside five feet, and then someone will say, "Just tell yourself I'm a great putter. Just stop that in your head. Just stand over that thinking I'm a great putter. I'm a great putter. I'm a great putter." Yeah. And and it, and it, and it it'll work. And it'll work. Yeah. And then. Where they does it work in the next store? I know, but those those little nuggets sometimes it's it's no, bizarre how our brains work and how they operate. I mean, I yeah. I played last week, and as I mentioned to you, I played really well because I don't know. I got into my head. Oh, I've not played for ages. There's no expectation. I could be rubbish or I could be good, and actually things really flowed. But I'd seen a, a friend of mine and I'd seen his golf swing the week before, and I was like, oh my gosh, you're so slow with your back sweet with taking yeah. the club away and that's where yeah. I'm really quick so all I had in my head was just 
die just go slow yeah. slower than you usually do on your on your backswing and that is the one thought i had for the whole round and i played really yeah. well i think it's that's you can keep it concise like that you have one thought that's good i remember just a rose telling me that you cannot take it back too slow there's no such thing as too slow you know well there's you your look... tip there's your tip we there found one yeah yeah and, and it's it's all very well if you're taking it slow, but if you're taking it and the club heads get behind the hands, like <laughs> don't care how slow it is, it's not if you're still get yourself an ass where the only way out is to swing the it's arms up. Fishing, so, yeah. You no, know, and that's my real fault is that I get the club stuck behind me really badly on the way back. No matter my rehearsal is very uh Chauffle like or very JT like, where you know, very deliberate. And then um, you know, I'll, I'll watch, I'll record myself at the, or my mate will me about playing, or yeah. I'll, I'll, at the range I'll set up the camera and my that that put in the perfect position there. And, my, so, and then when I build the trigger reality and way back there, I'm like I end up doing the same thing. It's just it's 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 modeling. Yeah. Um, and this is where I think YouTube is really dangerous. You know, and we're all going on like we all do it. And I've talked with Claude Harmon about this about how you're like you go on there and. You get some little band aid swing fix that you know, and it worked. It actually worked for a few holes, but the reality is, those people making those YouTube videos and some of them are great, and there's some great characters on there and people are, like that I really respect the way they talk about the game. They're talking so generally, and they've never seen you swing the golf club, and that's yeah. where it's just, you know people go, oh well, that, you know, I'm not saying there's basic things like the grip and stuff that that she benefit everyone, but. I'm a big believer in in you know your whoever's coaching you and instructing you, they really need to see see you rather than you going on YouTube going, oh well, that looks like it's working for him. We're all built different. Uh, physicality is so different. Yes. it's so different. We you know we all move differently. All we've had injuries or, or the age we're at, whatever it is, we all move differently. So what works on a sort of general level on a YouTube like tip. It might not. It might be the opposite of what you need to be told because actually, naturally, you're doing something that's going to, you know, it's all that sort of, um, you know, uh, counter reaction and stuff. You know. Yeah, but you how know, wonderful you, that we can all have t have different, totally different golf swings. Even yeah. you know, we don't. They yeah. don't have to look perfect, and that's no. why golf I, is for everybody out there. Yeah, but that's the thing. I, I, I. I I would love an ugly golf swing. I don't care about the aesthetics of it. I don't need to look as much as I feel like I want to look like Adam Scott, Rory, Freddie Couples, Louis O'Stays, and all Ernie L's, all the best swingers of golf clubs. Yeah. I don't care if I have a really robotic looking swing or ugly looking swing or Furyk or Kutcher or one of those guys who's, you know, not not pretty to watch. If it they speak work. really highly of your swing, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> but like with it, it, you, you like Jim Furyk and Mark Kutcher aren't going, I have a pretty girl swing. They know <laughs> they swing it funky, you know, but they're two of the biggest earners of all time, you know. Um, but that's what I'm sort of getting to. Like, I don't care what it looks like, it works, and I can get the club head square on the ball every time, which I just find very hard to do. So, Jamie, you've, you've spoken about your love for golf and, and the fact that you watch a lot of it. Uh, the US PGA Championship is happening this week. Do you have anyone that you're behind? Well, Rory, of course. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win it? Well, I think I do. I see genuinely think Rory may win it. I, I, this will either be really spot on or way off, but I, I think Rory might win the US PGA on the Open this year. I think he might have to. And I think it'll be one of those weird things, like when he uh, capitulated on the on the uh, uh, last day in, in 2011 at the Masters. I think the yeah. miss this year might be one of those sort of blessing things that kicks him into some other place, yeah. hopefully that, that 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 gets him hopefully two of the three remaining majors. <laughs> this is where I, this oh. is what I'll be uh, hoping for you. Yeah. Oh, great. And then you'll definitely watch the weekend of the golf, won't you? Which yes. is good. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you for your tip. Now, we've got, uh, we like to ask our guests five clubhouse curveballs at the end. Uh, so it's just uh, some quick fire questions for you. Our first one is, before we finish, if you could be a caddy for a week, who would you caddy for and which tournament would you pick? 
I'll, I'll name them all. Oh. Are you well, going Rory again? Well, <laughs> it's very hard not to be. Also, uh, what vintage is it? Like, if, if it, it could be like. It can so, be past and present. Anyone? be hard to not like you know early 2000s tiger <laughs> yeah. that would be mega to see done up close tiger at the masters tiger the Masters in 87 if i'm really honest um would have been pretty special well i'd also love the caddy for all the like proper characters of the game like lee trevino or something you know about um, um or freddy couples just to just watch that swing all day um yeah the yeah, pro probably tied down as well. Yeah, the Masters. Okay. Oh, I love the fact that you love the game so much and know so much about it. Okay, second one. Uh, what's uh, your What's your favourite golf course that you've ever played? Favourite golf course? Uh, oh, God. Um, probably Sunningdale, the old Sunningdale. Um I just think it's magical, and I even though I never played well there. <laughs> um, <laughs> not that day when you played with Tim and no, Steve. No, no. 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 But I, look, I'm lucky. I played a lot of great. But I, Royal Bull Rush is yeah. is magic. Um, a definite honourable mention to Royal Belfast, where I've been a member for 30 years. And actually, someone asked me recently if you knew you were going to die and you had one round of golf, where would you play it? And it could be some. It could be Augusta. It could be somewhere you've never played, or it will be to Cypress Hill or Spyglass or any of those. And I say Royal Belfast without even thinking because that's where I have so many memories and I'm, you know, it's just a lifetime of memories at that place. Uh, so for me, it'd probably be, be there. Is it the best course I've ever played? Probably not. Um, the, for nostalgia reasons and from where my heart is, I'd probably probably say there. Um, yeah, I mean, the old course is now just is pretty spectacular. And, yeah. You know, I, 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 dare I say it, quite scorable. You know, you can sort of go left quite a lot and and, and be in play. Uh, yeah. Yeah, great, great answer. You've given us a few there. Yeah, my a friend of mine played it last week. I just I just texted, don't go right, don't go right. On the old course. Uh, number three, if you could portray any golfer in a biopic movie, who would you pick? Well, I... Uh, so, so that I wouldn't have to put on an accent that have to be Rory. I mean, we're literally <laughs> exactly. You're, you're good at accents, though. You are good. No, at, okay. Yeah, like it, it, it's nice when you don't have to do work, and if you're from the same postcode as that person, and we've both got curly hair, so uh, <laughs> that's just easier too. They wouldn't have to do much there. Uh, <laughs> Who's uh, more famous? Who's the, the more famous person to come out of Hollywood? Oh, you or Rory? Rory? Come on, uh, Rory. Rory's name is on like sign when you come into Hollywood it says like well <laughs> Hollywood home where Rory McIlroy is so yeah does he not say and, and Jamie Dornan no I'm not no. <laughs> they still all there not so <laughs> okay we're gonna go with Rory then number four if you were forced to putt putt the ball without a golf club which alternative piece of sporting equipment would you use you can go like tennis racket snook well, cue ski pole Snooker, snooker, but too easy, wouldn't it? I mean, I mean you get down I low, like yeah, I, 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 I guess. I think, yes. um, I think, uh, I feel probably a hockey stick would probably give me the best chance. Yeah, great, good, good choice, excellent. At number five, our final question: What's your drink of choice on the nineteenth hole? Very dependent on where I am. Um, if I'm on this island, it, well, it would probably be Gillis. Uh, <laughs> but then sometimes on a sunny day, uh, you don't want to drink stout. Um, so um, I probably just, I usually just want like a nice fizzy cold lager. Um, <laughs> I so, love that. On a sunny day, you just don't want to drink stout. No, but you, know, you don't. It's not where your, not where your head goes. You want something just a bit zappier and uh, uh, colder. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, probably, probably just like a, a lager. Yeah. Okay, uh, Zara Phillips last week. She went um, champagne, something fizzy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she's a good, she's a good drinker. Zara, that, but, but she was yeah. down at 
for this the only other time I was wearing the top um, of my birthday. Oh, great. Oh, we've also had like um, someone would have a an Arnold Palmer as well, which is a really refreshing drink after a round sure. of golf. Uh, that was, good. yeah. Uh, Tom Evans on one of our shows and finally Jamie you've been so kind we've loved having you on thank you so much um, your insight has been amazing your stories have been so entertaining um, could you finish off our final question is why play golf be involved in golf um, be part of the golfing community because it's probably I think there's probably more that you'll get out of it than you think you will and you know whatever sort of sort of predetermined ideas you have of the game and the type of people who play the game, you're probably, you know, going to be proven wrong. Um, it gets you out the bite. It, you can be as competitive as you like. And if you, everyone has terrible golf in them. <laughs> and there's <laughs> comfort in that. So even if you're starting out and you're frustrated because it's, um, you know, it's not an easy sport. That you've got to, if you accept that it's never going to be easy, and there's been people playing their whole lives who don't find it easy. So, um, if you can just go and enjoy it and, and uh, get all the good things out of it, like the fresh air and the and the, and the sort of banter and competitiveness of it, then uh, you and me go have a good time. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you. And we also, um, the team say thank you. And we loved you dancing on Instagram with your ski poles recently. Oh, yeah. we, li we liked the way you move. Look, girl, yeah. thank you. It's okay. <laughs> oh, you. Delete my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fab. It's really entertaining. Listen, um, we, we love watching you in, in all that you do. And good luck with the series that you're filming in Dublin. Uh, play some good golf tomorrow at a dare manor. And cool. I'm sure you've inspired some today. You've been brilliant. Really brilliant company. Thank you for joining us. All right. All right thanks, Dad. See you later. Remember, if you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe on your favourite podcast provider and the next episode will drop into your feed automatically. Make sure to also leave us a review too. We're also on Instagram. Just search for This Is Why Golf and that's the best place to submit your questions for Clubhouse Curveballs, which we'll put to our next guest. To find out more of the most up-to-date insights and research, just head to thisiswhygolf.com where there's lots more information on all the benefits that golf has to offer. We will be back on Friday the 26th of May to find out someone else's why golf. But until then, from me, Di Stewart, it's goodbye. Goodbye.